throughout history, the most effective way of controlling populations is by controlling the information that populations have access to. A modern example is the education system, set up to produce more compliant factory workers. And to this day, there are multiple other systems that can control societies. Otherwise, it is thought there'd be chaos. As of now, the systems in place are helped more than ever before by the sheer volume of noise that we have become addicted to. We have become compliant to the noise that is helping the systems paralyze us into complacency and mediocrity. Cheerful, huh? It's what noise does. It takes. It takes our attention. It takes our passion. And it moves us away from our true self and our higher purpose our signal. It's there. Somewhere. But it's covered in so much noise that we find it hard to work out what really matters. Noise takes our attention and passion. Signal gives belief and trust. We have become critically addicted to throwing birds at pigs and celebrating heroes and having our children celebrate our heroes with partial talent who sing to our young people about drunken sex and us as parents having to explain to our daughters and sons that that isn't something to aspire to, whatever their heroes say, and however they were conceived. I'm on record saying that if Mandela had tweeted, and if Che Guevara had mobile, and if Da Vinci had Photoshop, and if Einstein had Google, it wouldn't have made the damn bit of difference. It wasn't the tool. It wasn't the platform. It was what was in here. I'm glad they didn't have the noise. Otherwise, they'd be downloading game apps. We are in critical risk of having our hearts hijacked by Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> we aspire to be people that we wouldn't even like if we met. We want to be thinner, richer, younger. We want to be anything other than us. And that is what noise is doing. It is removing our identity. You know what? It's doing such a good job, we think the noise is giving. We think the noise is our signal. We think that mediocrity is good enough. We think that average is something to aspire to. We are given reality TV, 
false idols, one version of the truth, and a range of politicians identical to every other range of politicians. It's brilliant. It's worked. The systems couldn't dream of a better scenario than this. The noise has reduced the level of the bar so low, because noise takes, that we think that we're being extraordinary, but actually, it's ordinary when you compare it to something truly extraordinary. Some people make a stand. Some people take action. The masses will stick with the noise. We'll stick with limited curiosity. We'll stick with a system that limits creativity. With all of these weapons of mass communication, we could do so much, but we won't revolt. We're not going to ask too many questions. We're not going to delve too deep. We wouldn't be obedient. The noise has made us happy with our role in society, just as it ever was. And if we want to maintain our role, my advice is to do nothing. Do not aspire for more. Do not question authority. Under no circumstances, try and denoise. Don't rage against no machine. Under that circumstance, I guarantee you we will never achieve anything extraordinary, so it's okay. But I have to ask you, is that what we want? No. Is that what you want? I'm here today to tell you that we have an individual responsibility to break out of this holding pattern of mediocrity. We have an individual responsibility to denoise. We have that responsibility. But you know what? The systems and the machines and the noise ain't going to help you along that path, obviously. So you're going to need a toolkit. Here's one part. Extreme clarity of what matters and what doesn't matter. Extreme clarity, regardless of how damn attractive the blah, blah, blah is, because it is, right? Can't get enough of those talent shows. It might smell like noise. It might look like noise. That might feel like noise, but we'll still think that it's signal. The second thing we have to do, if we want to break out of the mediocrity, is to be persistent. To be so persistent in our maintaining of clarity that I would say this line should help on that journey. The main thing, my friends, is to keep the main thing the main thing. You can be sitting in a room, in a dark room, somewhere in Portugal, let's say, all day, and still that persistence is needed. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And the third part 
of a suggested toolkit. is to search for inspiration For my part, I'm inspired by people like this dude. His name is Max Ehrman. In 1927, he wrote a poem that didn't become famous until after he passed away in 1958. This poem means so much to me that I tracked down one of his last living relatives and asked her if I could speak here today about the words he wrote, and she gave me her personal blessing to do so. This is a small section of a long poem called Desiderata, which is Latin for desired things. Go placidly admit the noise and haste, and remember what peace there may be in silence. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And whether or not it's clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Therefore, be at peace with God, who, whatever you conceive him or her to be, and whatever labors and aspirations in the noisy confusion of life, keep peace within your soul. With all its sham, drudgery, and broken dreams, it's still a beautiful world. So, be careful, strive to be happy. This, my friends, is signal. This ain't noise. So this is what Signal feels like. And this is what we're going to talk about now, what it feels like. What Signal feels like is something you want to pass down to the next generation. This is the stuff I'm going to tell my kids about. And you know what? We can all tell what's noise and what's Signal. We can. It's just we've tuned it out. We've tuned it out. Signal is giving. Noise is taking. Let me give you an example. You're in a relationship. Things aren't going so well. You're feeling that your insides are somehow being taken. Your soul is being somehow extracted. You can't, it just feels like you're being taken over. Noise. The relationship is becoming noise. You're inside a room with brilliant people bouncing ideas off each other, really inspirational, and you're leaning forward thinking, this is it, this is it, this is it. That, my friends, is signal in the room. You're in a car dealership, looking at all the posh cars, thinking, which one is going to impress my friends? Which one is going to get me a girlfriend or a boyfriend? Which one is going to make me look richer than everyone else? You're in a vacuum of noise, my friend. It's 2.30 in the morning, and you're sitting in a hotel room in Porto, glued to the screen with this program on, and you can't turn it off. It's not a trivial thing. It's not a fantasy thing. There's something happening, and you know you've got to get up the next morning and speak in front of a whole bunch of people, but you can't stop it. It's on the signal. You know why? Because that's instinct. And instinct cannot be taken away by the machinery, the systems, or the noise. Your instinct is the only thing you can tell what is signal and noise. And I will leave you with this. If nothing else, every time you are in a situation, you can be assessing what is signal and what is noise by remembering just this. Noise takes, signal gives, and instinct guides what legacy lives. Thank you.